Hi everyone, Ryan from Masuva here. About six months ago I did a video demonstrating a, an events and calendaring system that we developed uh, in-house and it was a system we developed because we needed a way to output events and display calendars and lists of events in ways that other calendaring systems were quite tricky to set up and from that we generated a fair bit of interest because we took a different approach to managing event information. Instead of having a system where we input events and attach them to pages, we decided to make the the package composer driven so that the date information for each event on the Concrete 5 site was actually controlled by a page attribute and then we had a simple block to output that information. And this has worked amazingly well for the projects we've run it on so far and over the last six months we've continued to add features to the system while still keeping it relatively simple in the way that it works and today what I wanted to do was demonstrate the new features of the system and uh, sort of show you where we've got up to because we think it's fairly feature complete and we are running it on a lot of production sites now so what I want to start to do is I'm going to install it and one of the new features is the installation um, also handles the automatic setup which didn't happen before but just before I do that I'm going to install another package that I developed just to make things easier it's a um, edit and composer toolbar button so for composer driven pages this button quickly allows uh, to jump to the composer view for that page so I'm going to install that and for the actual um, calendar package I've got now an option to effectively don't configure anything just install the package and don't do anything or I can have it automatically set up at the composer page and an events page so I'm going to pick that option so now when I go to my website my home page I'll see there's a new page called events and this is the parent where all the new events are going to be published and I've got a block that's automatically added on there and the way that this works is that any time that you want uh, a, a list of events or a calendar of events to display you add a easy calendar block and the block now has features such as uh, pagination it has uh, different filtering and you can limit the number of events but what I want to do right now is I'm just going to output a full calendar view which is a which is a month view like that so this is this is ready to go now if I go to the composer I've now got automatically set up from the package an event page type that has a series of attributes to store more information about the event so we've got the event dates which I'll talk about in a sec but I've added a few extra bits and pieces event details and location now the idea with this package is that this is not too bad you know to begin with these are the, the common things you need but because it's composer driven and page attribute driven you can add as many attributes as you as you want down the track so uh, you could for example add attachments or you could um, have extra fields you might have a contact name those sort of things and it's no different than any other attribute uh, driven page in Concrete 5 and that's what we think is the most powerful thing it's, it's using Concrete 5's built-in um, structuring and really the the only automatic part of this is that we've now got this event um, event date input as an attribute so I'm going to create um, a, a first test event so this is pretty straightforward like creating a new page and we've set it to automatically publish beneath this events page now this is what we've improved. Last time um, we demoed this system, I was showing very much a natural sort of language way of entering event time. So you would type in, um, you would type in something like June twelfth, two thousand fourteen. Now I've kept that in here. I've got this manual mode where we can still add, um, we can still add dates in this way, but. Um, from feedback and reflection and looking at it um, we decided to add an option to have a date picker it ended up making it easy to control but also um, 
we kept the old manual editing function in there. So it's sort of, from our point of view, the best of both worlds. So I'm just going to um, I'm just going to save this page to refresh it, and we can see um, at the moment there's no dates we've added in here. But let's say I want to add in uh, a date that is um, on Thursday. I'm going to pick this date here, and I'm going to say it starts at 9 a.m. and it ends in the afternoon at 3 o'clock. I'm going to add that date there, and that's added it to this list. Now, I can build up as many dates as I need there, but what I can also do is hit this manual mode and make a quick change. So if I wanted that to be 2 o'clock, I can do that. And I might say, I also know that this is going to be on... This on uh, the 17th, but it's an all day event, so I'm going to add that there. And it's going to be at my house and uh, bring your own homebrew. So if I publish this page, we've now got this page type outputting the title of the event, adding a description and the extended description, but now I've been uh, focusing on the output of the dates, I've been prettifying those. So this now um, structures this. So it's a bit more readable. So it doesn't say June 12th to June 12th if it doesn't need to. Um, it tries to intelligently output dates that are very readable and how you would write them if you're writing them, them out yourself. And this is also showing the two dates there. And it's outputting some basic attributes, but this is this is no different than um, a normal attribute-driven page. And the other extra feature is on that we can see here is that this generates an iCal file for that event, which is um, very handy as well. So we can go back in and we could edit this in the composer. And really, to edit these dates, I could add more dates here, or I could simply just get rid of these or I could switch to manual mode and just adjust the, the date and time. So it's very, very easy to go from a date on the front end and edit it in Composer and adjust it. Um, we can also do things like, just say this is, uh, this will go from the 29th here to, let's say we'll go to the 3rd. So the 29th to the 3rd. I've added that as an end date and I've actually got options for start and end times and start and end dates and really there's any combination of these that you'd like. The other feature that I've added and this is um, relatively new is that um, we looked at repeating events and this is something I discussed in, the, in my first video about this package. Um, repeating events are rare but there are still times where you want to type in something like um, a, a, an event's going to show up uh, every Monday for the next eight weeks. That That is something that's come up and we found that there was just enough times where that happened in real life where it was worth adding something in. So to, to handle repeating events, it's really quite easy. Let's say from the uh, on the Friday here, we're going to repeat this daily four times. So I can pick a, a day and a date and then this effectively says repeat that daily um, four times after. Or I might do something a bit uh, a little bit easier to show. Let's say that same date but we'll repeat that weekly four times. So that will show up five, five times on the calendar. I'm going to publish these changes and you can see that that's automatically expanded that date for us, but in the back end, it's showing quite clearly repeat weekly four. Um, we found this was just a really easy way to, to sort of see what's going on, and um, uh, it generally handles things quite elegantly. We can change that number if we need to repeat it, as opposed to trying to come up with something more complicated. This works. This works really, really nicely. So let's go back to our events actual page here, and we can see that the events are starting to show up on the calendar. Um, I've put the same event here, but you can see this one had a start time, and it's going to go to the same event. This one didn't. This one is a spanned event. 
which I said was the 20, 29th to the 3rd. And you can see there's my repeating event that's starting to show up. And here it is here. I'm going to add another event here. I'm going to add in um, another one. And I'm going to say this is currently on today. And today is the, the 10th. And I'm going to say it started this morning and it's going to end later this afternoon, this evening. I'm not going to add any more details here. We'll, we'll leave that like that. So that one is something that is spanning across that time. And we should see, there it is there, there's today. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another page to my site. I might, oop, better add that under the home. Add another page to my site and I'm going to um, this is going to be upcoming events and what I'm going to do on this page is add in uh, an easy calendar block and I'm going to add the next 10 events I'll put some pagination on there as well uh, everywhere and I'm going to pick a template for this block. Now I've got multiple templates and this is really what defines what we're showing. On the other page I used full calendar and in that case you want it to grab all the events and spit out a, 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 an actual month view. But we've got current, current and future, future, next seven days, past and today and they're all sort of different filters to show uh, different sort of subsets of the events in there. What I want to show at the moment, we're going to test out current first. Now current is only showing something where if you said right now is there something running and in this case we do have something running it's the second event that I created earlier we're sort of at the moment the time is between the two times set here so this is uh, a good template if you're wanting to be really uh, up, you know up to date and it's, it might have a, a series of events over a day and it's a really intensive sh sh um, s schedule and you want to show what's happening. Um, if I change it to current and future, it'll show that event at the top, but then it's going to show all the events that are after that. So things that are on and things that are coming up. And I can turn on some pagination there if I want, and we can we can scroll scroll through the uh, the next set. So current and future there, that sort of makes sense. Um, but what I'm what I'll show is if I edit this event. And I change this to say, well, it's definitely in the past. So at the moment, um, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. So if I change this to 11 a.m., it should be fine like that. You'll see that this event has actually detected, oh, that's in the past. And the code is set up in both the, the page template and the pages templates to be able to detect whether or not an event is in the past. And we could do something interesting with a page. We could turn on and off different information or put that um, you know, somewhere quite large to say this event is over. But for, you know, by default, it's just something modest. But if I go to the upcoming events now, you'll see that that event has dropped off that list. And that's the whole point of, of these different filters. If I went to the past event list, see that's where that one appears so you can have an archive of events that have passed and you can have an archive of um, or you can have a, a list of things that are currently on and you can have a list of things that are going to be in the future this is uh, by itself this is quite plain but hypothetically you could pull in some page attributes to pull in an image and you might want to turn this into more of a banner and we've done that on one of the sites I think I showed in the first video where the banner of the home page changes depending on what's on. And there's an exhibition and if that's currently on and it might last a week, that'll pull in that event, link to that event in the calendar but also pull in some banner images. So it's more about providing some, some easy ways using page attributes to and to manage those pages and those page attributes in date controlled ways. And this is what we think we're achieving with this. Um, I'll change this back to current and future. This is probably the most common way that you would use the event output. You would simply put something like this on the home page and then you might have a page where it lists the um, the events in more of a, of a spread out format like this. Um, 
just to show in the sitemap here those events the ones we're creating they've been created underneath there so um, it's it ultimately it's a pretty uh, simple site structure and you can treat them like any other page but the the beauty is that behind the scenes that event attribute the dates is what's automatically um, feeding those events through to these uh, easy calendar blocks and what makes it understand when and when not to show the events now as I said uh, this is this is fairly plain theming this is just the default theming and out of the box the the um, event output is uh, intentionally plain so I'll just quickly show an example of a styled up calendar that we've uh, we've been working on recently now with this site here we've set up multiple different calendars so instead of there being the one top level page is actually multiple here and we can filter each of the, uh, the calendar blocks per region of the sitemap in the same way you can with a page list block or you can also show uh, all uh, events together as one so if we go into an actual calendar here we can see that I've used both a month view and a list of next upcoming events all on the same page they're just blocks we can move them around freely um, with this one I've obviously colored this up and I've added some extra JavaScript to show additional detail um, at the end of the day though this is not much different than customizing a page list um, it's really just customizing the the templates and the output of these blocks now if I go into the actual page and the page template itself you can see with this one we've really just done some extra tricks to output a Google map um, we've used some extra attributes to add um, some fields to the page and we've added some share links but really this is again just customizing the page type the page template with the extra attributes and the calendaring system is what is actually handling the output of the events on the individual calendars and this one in itself has um, hundreds uh, of events I think this is five or six hundred events and this seems to be working quite quite well so you can see this is this is it here with the hundreds of events in there and speed wise we're having no issues and you can see uh, events that have got multiple times and dates all running quite nicely so this has been a summary of our easy calendar event system for concrete 5 we've not added it to the marketplace at this stage as we feel it's a package that's more focused for developers to customize for a custom theme or a, a website project however we do welcome people to contact us if they'd like to use this package as part of their website projects please feel free to do so cheers